Welcome, everybody, to the Kona Shane Veterinary Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Andy Rourke. Guys, I am here with my friend, Tyler Grogan. She is a CVT, and she works for me at the Untried Veterinary Conference. And we are talking about what happens when you are done with your life's work. And so Tyler's got a, a great question here that came from one of our community members in Uncharted. And it's, it's a really good philosophic discussion about phases of our life and what happens when we don't want to do the thing that we've been doing in the past and the guilt that a lot of people wrestle with when they say, I, I want to leave, I want to change, I want to, to try something different, but I feel like I'm giving up on the legacy I've been trying to build or I feel like I'm quitting on a field that I was called to. And anyway, we get into all of that. This is a really interesting conversation. I hope you guys will enjoy it. Let's get into it. This is your show. We're glad you're here. We want to help you in your veterinary career. Welcome to the Cone of Shame with Dr. Andy Rourke. Welcome to the podcast, Tyler Grogan CVT. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Andy? I'm doing really well. It's always good to see your smiling face which I get to see quite regularly because uh, we live in the same town and you you work for me. And so that <laughs> that makes us uh, see each other uh, quite regularly. So for those who do not know you, you are the Creative Marketing Director at Uncharted Veterinary Conference. What, is that, what does that entail, Tyler? What does that mean? You know, I do a little bit of everything, Andy. A little bit of promoting our events and telling people what we're doing over at Uncharted. I help out with our events when we put them on, creating stuff on our social media, all kinds of things like that. Writing newsletters. So yeah, yeah. you're doing a little uh, bit of everything. You're doing you're doing a bit of speaking these days, and you are actually doing really good stuff. Now you're blushing. You do yeah. really good. You do really good lectures. You do really great lectures on. The customer experience, I think, is, is sort of your area of expertise. I think it's it blends in with the marketing work that you do, but you do very cool stuff on engaging your clients as they come into the building. You do work on Q theory, which is the science of getting people to enjoy waiting, and lots of really interesting stuff that I just I love. I don't think anybody else is talking about it. And so, anyway, you do you do excellent work in a lot of different areas, and you're also writing a bit, and you wrote something that really I thought was very interesting and I have not seen other people talking about it. And so let me pause here and just open the sort of the floor to you for a second. Why don't you sort of talk about the piece about the end of our life's work? Sure. One of the things that I do over at Uncharted is our community newsletter. So every month our members get a newsletter from us. And a few months ago I was encouraged to write for it. So I started writing and all told, I think the I mean, yes. all told, I think is the well. Is I wasn't going to call you out on the podcast that you run, but <laughs> yes, you all told me to write more. So I started writing these letters from the editor, and every month go into the community and look for some things that people are doing and share kind of their wins and their trophies, and also just see you know what everybody's doing that's great in their practices. And uh, there was one post that came out uh, this past month that I recognized someone was struggling with. This idea of selling their practice or moving on from being a practice veterinarian to pursue other things. And there was a kind of a feeling of guilt, it seemed like, in the post. Yeah. And that really struck me because I remember when I left practice and started working full time with Uncharted, I had a really hard time dealing with the idea of not being a vet tech, not being the person on the floor handling the pets. And what did that mean about my identity and my role in veterinary medicine? And so I could really resonate with perhaps what she was going through. So it just gave me this thought of what does it mean when you're done with what you considered was your life's work? I mean, I've never been a business owner or a practice owner, so I can't directly relate, but I can imagine dedicating your entire world to building this business and then considering walking away from that or working in it in a different way it could be scary and a really big question to answer. So what do you do when you're done with what you considered your life's work? Yeah. So that's where it came from. It's I love that. I, I think that's really interesting. And I it's funny, I get a lot of private phone calls about this. It's not, you know, not people don't raise their hand at, at lectures or, or anything and ask me about it, but I get a lot of questions because I've done a lot of different things in my career, I think. And so people say, Well, Andy's he has done things and then 
done different things. And, you know, when they're kind of looking at ending a chapter, I, I get those phone calls sometimes. And it's, it's funny. I, I thought, I thought a lot about it. I think, I think there's a couple pieces to this. I think that, I think you put your finger right on at the beginning, Tyler. I think that there's a couple weird things about vet medicine that I don't think other industries have. And I think the identity aspect, I don't think happens so much in other, other areas. Like, I don't know that people see themselves as a barista. Like I'm an insurance provider. It's exactly right. I mean, it, it, totally. And like, yeah. I am actually blown away sometimes when I talk to people who were not remotely defined by their career. And I, I have tried hard to not let veterinarian define me as a person, but it's a constant battle because it's, it's, I always say it doesn't define me. And then I'll meet new people. I'm like, hi, I'm Andy. I'm a veterinarian because I know that they're going to like that. It's going to make them happy and they're going to want to know me. And like, I say it and it's just, it reemphasizes this idea of like, this is who I am as a, as a person. And, and I don't know the other, the other people have those, have those thoughts. I think, I think also there's the calling. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I think there's some, some vet techs that feel this way for sure, but I think it's, it's definitely heavy on the doctors. People say vet medicine is a calling. And if you buy into that, it really does feel like leaving is a failure of some great, like spiritual call that you've had, you know, you're like, I was called to vet medicine and I got tired of it and decided I was going to go into, you know, into pharmaceutical sales. It just feels awful. I've always kind of pushed back against that idea that vet medicine is a calling. And some people really don't like when I say that because I speak so lovingly of vet medicine, but I could, two things can be true at the same time. You can really like vet medicine and also say, I don't, I don't feel like it's a calling. I feel like it's a job and it's something I'm happy to do while I'm doing it. But I think a lot of people really struggle with that. I completely agree with that. And, you know, I was definitely one of those people, you know, walking out of practice, I felt like I suddenly wasn't fulfilling some greater purpose. Like it almost felt like I was abandoning something that was bigger than me. And I remember sitting with that for a while and thinking about, okay, who was I before I worked in a veterinary practice? And like, what are the things about me that define me beyond that, that title? And I've also had conversations with people that work in different, in veterinary medicine, but in different countries and their perspective on work in their life is such, it can be so different. And yeah their definition, they do really care and are very dedicated to this profession, but they're also talking more about the things they do outside of that, like their role in their community, the yeah. things that they're active within their community doing, maybe gardening in the local community garden or, you know, the things that they do with their families or talking about their families. And I think that there's just kind of a different perspective. And when I thought about this person that I, I know relatively well, thanks to Uncharted being such a tight knit community, I know her for who she is more than I, like, I've never worked with her in practice. So I know her as a person and the way yeah. that she, she has impacted me in my life as a person outside of veterinary practice. And so I think it's really easy to forget that you have a purpose as a person outside of the context of the walls of a veterinary practice, like how you impact people is so much beyond, like it grows so far beyond that. And in the article that I wrote, I talk about, you know, was your goal what was your goal in starting this in this business or starting your practice was it to create a space that you could have medicine be practiced in a way that you felt was good for the animals or did you want to create an environment for people that also love to practice medicine and that they would want to stay and they would have a lifelong fulfilling career there because as you walk away from that that is still probably true you probably created exactly what you were aiming to create and just because you're hands on involvement may change it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not part of who you are anymore and so yeah. there was just so much to to dig into there and and like i said as a person she's had a great impact on me in my life and so it was just really interesting to think about that she didn't see the impact she could have in the same way outside of her practice yeah i think i think you really put your finger right on it i i'm guilty of looking at things like a practice and saying yes this is the mark I will make on the world. You know, like this will be my legacy. And and you you look at that and it, it feels like a tangible thing that you need to have. Like I need a gold watch from doing 30 years in this, you know, organization or whatever. And, and as the world has changed, 
the idea that any of us are going to stay in a job for 30 years is, you know, it's not as common as it used to be. Now, if you, if you own the place, that can be a little bit different. But for most of us, you know, we're getting more accustomed to the idea of having multiple jobs and not having one thing. And so I, I think that that's sort of the changing state of the world. I think you're spot on in this idea. A lot of us look at a thing and you say, I'm going to be a house call veterinarian and I'm going to serve this community and that will be my legacy. I am in it and I'm going to do it for the rest of my career. And then you do it for 15 years and you say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for something else. And if you have tied your legacy to this house call business, walking away from it feels like quitting. It feels like abandoning the legacy that was so important to you. And so I, I, but I think that that's a mental trap and I think you, you put your finger right on it. The idea that your practice or your time in practice is your legacy, it's a mental fallacy. I think what's exactly right, Tyler, is what you said of it is, why did you start this practice? What did you hope to accomplish? What was your goal in starting it? Because you can set down that practice and walk away and continue to pursue that goal. And thereby your legacy becomes, I want to have this supportive impact on my community and I'm not going to do it with my house call practice. I'm going to do it in other ways. I'm going to go and partner up with another group of doctors and do something different, but I am still pursuing the goal and making that legacy true. And now I'll say, I have served my community for 15 years as a house call veterinarian and then for 10 more years as a co-owner of the emergency hospital and then blah, blah, blah. And you put together this really great resume. And I don't know what great resume means in this context, but you put together this resume of continuing to pursue your goal, continuing to make a difference, even though the house call vet chapter of your life has closed. But I think, I think if you don't break the, what was the point with all of this? Was it really to have a big building and a sign that people recognize? Or was it to do something great? If, if you can break that point out, I think that that's really the key. And I think you can carry that key oftentimes into retirement. I think a lot of people who are just like, I, you know, it's not even about shutting down what I'm doing and doing something else. I think for a lot of people going into retirement, they really do kind of have to figure out what their why is and what pursuit of that why in a different way looks like. And it may just be being the most engaged grandparent that you can be. That's that's part of your legacy. It really is probably, it's probably one of the most important parts of your legacy. It's so true. And I love what you said about, you know, this is a different way to serve the, your community because we evolve. And I think this is something I'm I'm learning more about myself, but we evolve as we age and get older and our priorities shift and the things that we care about shift. And then the beauty of veterinary medicine is that the people that come into practices are people that really care about what we do. And they're people that by opening the door for them to have a different role in that space may give them the catalyst to do the next amazing thing that they're going to do. So you know, stepping out of that role and allowing someone else to fulfill it or fulfill a different role within that community or that group of people, you know, it, it opens doors for everyone. And it also, you can shift and evolve and do different things and you're still growing and you're still learning and you can still use it to, again, like you said, serve the same people, you know, still help the, if that was your goal from the beginning was to be someone that your community could rely on for the, this information and, and this care for their pets. It could be different. It can just be something new. And I think that that's, that's so fun. I mean, I don't get me wrong. You work with me. You know well enough that I'm not always the most eager about change or <laughs> uncertainty, definitely uncertainty. <laughs> so I might come off like I'm like, change is great. Everything is super easy. Like, this is no problem. It's definitely not. And it's not for me. But it is, you know, taking a step back and allowing yourself to have that perspective for a minute and just think, okay, this could be really cool. This could be really fun. And the work that we do that we're excited about is the work that makes the biggest impact. You know, those are the things that really leave the mark or the things that you did when you were so in it and so in your flow and you were excited about it at the time. So it would almost be a disservice not to pursue what you're excited about rather to yeah. stay in something that's comfortable. So 
I have to remind myself of these things, like I said, on a regular and daily basis. But I think that it's a good opportunity to step back and, and have a different perspective for a minute to let yourself not feel those feelings of, am I walking away from what my life was supposed to be? Because your life is so much more than just one thing. Hey there, are you somebody who likes to get sh- stuff done. You want a GSD. You want to get stuff done. Guys, I have a virtual event for you. It is October 23rd. It is the Uncharted GSD event. Guys, this is all about making an impact in your practice. We do things the uncharted way. That means you're going to be actually working on your practice. You're going to be sitting here and getting talked at and remembering 8% of it because you're actually looking at Facebook. No, you're going to be in here doing this camera on working with other people on your practice to get it better. That's October 23rd. We have got Andy Flurry. She's here. She's doing our general session on Rockstar Resilience from Burnout to Brilliance. This is a great general topic just to get people reignited and rekindled and back to enjoying the work that we do. Because guys, it's hard to get stuff done when you're not motivated. So we've got to check that box. Andy's going to be absolutely amazing. We have the one and only Rebecca Rose, who you guys probably know from all of the articles that she writes and her work on social media. She is here doing communication and tough conversations we want to make people effective because honestly a lot of times our unwillingness or our dragging our feet to have those hard conversations it's slowing us down it's getting in the way of us getting stuff done we've got uh jen kwaman and ryan smith uh dr jim kwaman if you haven't ever seen her speak she is amazing her partner ryan smith is a life coach and uh is outstanding as well they are all talking about customer service and the customer experience we're going to be talking about what that looks like in your practice and how to revolutionize the customer service experience that you are offering so that you can have a greater impact so you can see more pets so you can provide better care so you can enjoy the interactions you have with clients more anyway guys that is just a small sampling of what we're going to be doing at gsd on october the 23rd you can join in from the comfort of your own home go ahead Get registered now, October the 23rd. I look forward to seeing you then. Let's get back into this episode. I think there's also this this idea. So part of it is there's this fear about the unknown. You you get quite comfortable in where we are. And and there's fear about, about changing and moving into something else. I think another way to kind of look at it is a lot of us have told ourselves that there is a finish line in our career. So when we say, this is my life's work and I'm going to walk away from this work, probably at some point we decided that this job, this, you know, a position, you know, whatever, that was go- that was the finish line. I was like, I will get here and I will do this and my life will be a success. And then what always happens is you get there and you realize that it, doesn't make you a success in your own eyes. You know what I mean? Like you don't feel any different about yourself now that you've been doing this for 20 years than you did when you did it for five years. And you don't feel any different about yourself now that you have this, I don't know, this academic position at the vet school than you did when you were grinding it out in in private practice. Like those that we tell ourselves, this is going to transform me or this is going to make my life meaningful or this is going to at least for me, it's always been like, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to accomplish this thing. I'm going to build this thing. And then I will have certifiable proof that I have been successful. I've made the impact that I wanted to make. And that, that, that transformation has never happened for me. And so I I think that that happens to a lot of us. I, you know, I heard a a phrase that I, I say this all the time and you've probably heard me say it a million times, but you know, life is what you experience it's not what you accomplish it's what you experience and so every day that we're out there in practice your life is what you're focusing on it is on the actual doing of the work and so i think it's easy to say oh no i'm leaving my life's work behind and i say well but that's that's a thing that you did it's not one is not who you are and also too it's not what your life was like as an experience it was not it was not the the process of being, if you will. And so I, I think that, that that's sort of a construct that people kind of get get sort of tied up in. And so I, I, that was just sort of the, the, a big part of it for me is if you can get your head around the idea that your life is not anything that you leave behind, but it instead is the, the sum of the experiences that you have along the way. And when I say experiences, I don't mean like going on vacation and stuff like that. I mean, the experience I have, if you and I are hanging out together and we're riding a bus, 
and I'm looking at my phone the whole time and scrolling on Instagram, that's my experience, right? Like my life is a bus ride looking at Instagram. And if I don't have my phone in my hands and I'm talking to you about, you know, what what the end of a career looks like or what career change looks like and we're having this this back and forth discussion that's 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 really interesting and engaging and you and I are building our relationship and we're thinking about things in different ways that's my experience that's my life and those are two wildly different experiences on the same bus ride but that's what your life becomes do, at the end of the day did you scroll instagram all day because that's the life you're leading or did you engage with other people and talk to them about what's important to them and feel like you grew the social fabric around you and you made these stronger relationships that, that they're going to continue to, to be able to take joy in? I just really think that that life is the experience. I think that that can help you feel that your life is rolling on, even though you've left this big part of you behind. I think the last thing for me, and I don't know if it's a good story or not, but it's, it's definitely something that happened in my life and it really affected me. It's just so silly when it's just a simple conversation that the person doesn't even remember. But when I was in vet school, and all the way up until vet school, I really enjoyed watching movies. I was a movie fan. I just, I really, I just like movies. I like getting lost in the story and, and just watching movies. I've heard you nerd out about Star Wars a couple of times. I mean, so I, 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 I had I, an idea. <laughs> I just watched a bunch of movies. I would watch, I would watch little art house stuff. I would, I'd watch all, all kinds of stuff. I just, I really liked movies a lot. And then Alice and my wife was pregnant. And, and so we were heading for our first child and I was at the end of that school and my mother-in-law was talking to me about something. And I said something like, oh, you know, I don't know these movies are coming out or there was a movie, you know, the release date was like the next year or something. And I said something to her and she said, well, you're not going to have any time to watch movies after this. And she kind of laughed at me. And I, I remember being angry, like really angry, like, Wait, how dare you? You know what I mean? I think I was probably afraid, like, cause you don't know what's going to happen when you have a baby. And I was like, is this? is this going to be the end of my movie watching? Like, it really scared me in that, like, I I imagined something I love being just taken away from me. And I was like, oh, crap. And then we had the baby. And the truth, Tyler, after that is, I just, I didn't watch movies. But also, it was, I didn't really want to watch movies. The truth is, I just want to go to bed. I was exhausted all the time. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, so it just, I it just didn't occur occur to me and then we had we just had other stuff going on and it wasn't like I was pining to watch movies and not getting to it was I just that phase of my life of my my girlfriend slash fiance slash new bride and I hanging out watching movies and going on dates like that 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 we did that and it was great but then that sort of phase of our life came to an end and then we had kids and things and it was hard to get out to the movie theater and it's just so, but I didn't pine for it. It just kind of that, that chapter ended. And that was the first time I, I sort of started to realize and recognize, like sometimes you have chapters in your life and those chapters just kind of close. I saw, I saw this post in social media one time. It was this person and I'm not, I still not exactly sure if they were in good faith or bad faith, but basically they were someone in their twenties and they were asking the question of, Hey, people who are 30 and older, what do you live for? Like, you're past your prime in every meaningful Ouch. way. I know. They were like, you're past your prime in every meaningful way. And again, how ridiculous was this? It was a person in their probably late teens, early 20s saying people over the age of 30, not 90, 30. And again, I wasn't sure this person was in good faith or bad faith, but I was just kind of like, I can't, the idea this person would say to someone in their 30s or 40s or 50s or whatever, why do you keep living? You all, the best stuff is behind you. I, th I, and here I am with my young family, like living the most rewarding phase of my life so far at that time. You know what I mean? And, and the fact that this person who's 21, who's like, now that I can go to the bars, I guess there's nothing left. And I'm like, <laughs> you have no idea how you're going to feel in five years. You have no idea what you're going to want in 10 years. You just, you don't know. And the things that I enjoy doing, I get up early and go to the gym now and I get teased about it. But yeah. I did not want to get up early and go to the gym in my 20s. But now I love it. It's great. And if you told me that when I was 30, I would have said, you're crazy. Leave me alone so I can sleep because my child is distracted. It's all that to say, it's through these sort of a couple of experiences that I really came to believe. There are chapters in our life and you might really, really want things for a certain amount of time in your life. 
and then that chapter comes to an end by external circumstances. You just get older and you tend to feel differently about things when you're different phases of your life. And the idea that you would feel guilty because what you want in this new chapter of your life is not what you wanted in your previous chapter of your life. I think that's, I think that's sad. And that, that whole chapter of your life thing, it has made me so much more open to change and so much more, I don't know, just, just flexible when I look ahead and I say, oh my gosh, the city of Greenville where we live, it's booming, Tyler. Like there's people moving yeah. here all day, every day. It's, it's gone from a town to being a tiny city and like it does not look like it's slowing down. And I can go, boy, am I going to want to be here in 10 years? And the truth is, I have no idea. In 10 years, my kids will have moved out, hopefully. And, you know, they might be they might be starting families and like maybe I want to be where they are. Who, who knows? Maybe it won't be a sad thing. I, I don't know how I'm going to feel when we get to that point. But I talk about this because that, that, that phases of life, those chapters of life, I think that's so vital to growing and being happy in different phases. And so when someone says to me, how do I put my life's work behind me? One, I go back to your point, which is, I think you should tease out the original goal. And I think you could probably continue that goal and you will continue your life's work even as you leave the thing behind. And then number two, I would say, you have chapters and phases in your life. And if a, there's nothing sadder than someone who has gone on to the next chapter, but is too afraid to turn the page. And it's just, it just, it changed them down and they're not happy and they don't enjoy these things they've made for themselves. And they feel like because they don't enjoy them now, they must have been untruthful in the past. And that's just not true. It's just, we change and we grow and we evolve in these phases. I just think that they're very, very real. And so anyway, for anyone who's feeling sort of guilty out there about moving into a new phase, I don't, I don't know, that the phases of life has helped me a lot just to say, yep, I've done this. I was in practice full time for this amount of time. And then I did relief work and I did that. And then I was the parent of your know, babies and toddlers. And I, I did that. I'm not, I'm not there anymore. And when I see parents who were in that phase, I look back with nostalgia, but I ain't confused. My, my teenage years <laughs> are very, very different. And I do not have toddler problems anymore. I did that and I empathize. And I, and again, I'm not interested in going back, but it was very rewarding when I was there. I think that that's a really good point in comparing it. I mean, I have not been a parent, but I have seen kind of people go through the different phases of, of their child's lives and how their lives evolve and change. And it's so true that it, it's a, it's a, it's a good comparison to make. And I'll just, you know, say that in terms of a career example, you know, if you had told me that you'd introduce me on a podcast one day, let like first, let's start there. But second, that I'd be have just got back talking to people about Q theory and Q management, I would have laughed in your face because I would have said, how in the world does that even happen? Like, tell me how that world unfolds because I don't understand. You just came back from lecturing in Canada. Like you were in another country, international speaker coming back for a podcast. I'm working on them inviting me to be, you know, a dual citizen. So, you know, because the mountains are amazing, but yes. Yeah, so very fortunate to have had those opportunities, but you know, it's because of random other parts of my life that those things that even came to be. That was just because of someone I knew that was outside of veterinary medicine that it came to be that that would be how I would start to speak. So, you know, things happen that you don't expect. They change the chapters of your life open and close. And I think you just have to, you know, walk into those moments and say, this is a good thing. Like, even if it feels scary right now, I met, I've met so many veterinary professionals and especially technicians that they're like, I can't, I don't know anything else. I don't know how to do anything else. Everything you do in practice is transferable to life yes. or to other careers. And you can do anything that you believe in yourself that you can, that you want to do. And so much of what we do is goes beyond the walls of a veterinary practice. So when you're faced with that moment where you're not sure if you're ready to walk away from being in practice or or whatever it is, whatever part of your career, you're ready to walk into practice. If you're not sure, if it feels like the thing that excites you the most, then go for it. You can totally, you can do it. So I'm very grateful for our community for being so vulnerable and honest with each other because it really allows us to have these conversations. And, you know, to close, I'll say that this person received so much support and option and, you know, offers for people to call 
to talk it out. People that have been in similar situations or maybe are also in a similar place. And it was followed by a post somewhat by someone else that's working on post-retirement writing stories about their life in practice. And it's been a great memory kind of jogging yeah. exercise for them. So I'm really grateful for our community for providing these conversations for us because, I mean, it's it's inspiring to watch for sure. No, I agree. Tyler, thanks so much for being here. Where can people, where can they find you? And then where can they learn more about the Uncharted Veterinary Conference and community? You could find me on LinkedIn or, you know, in the Uncharted community. I'm usually most active there. Uncharted, if you're not familiar, we are at unchartedvet.com. We put on virtual events and we also do lots of other things. And we have a podcast as well. So if you're interested in that. And unchar at Uncharted Vet is where we're at on social. So check us out. Sounds good. Thanks for being here, Tyler. Guys, thanks for listening, everybody. Take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you later on. And that's what I got. Guys, thanks for being here. Thanks to Tyler Groen for joining us. I hope you got something out of this episode. This is one of those episodes I really, I've very much enjoyed thinking about when I recorded it. I have enjoyed thinking about it since then. I hope you guys find, find some value in it or at least to stimulate some thought and discussion. So anyway, take care of yourselves, everybody. I'll talk to you later on. <laughs>